Okay, we'll open our meeting as usual with uh, any comments from the public you'd like to address the board. Up there, let us know what uh, James Kirk, Columbus Drive. Uh, a few meetings ago, it was discussed about that skeleton sign that is on the as you, as you come off the bridge, and kind of it was no big deal because it belongs to Champlain and not the Rouse's Point. I was just wondering if maybe Champlain could be talked to about either knocking that down or doing something over there. It kind of is a kind of is an ugly sight to see when you enter the uh, town. It looks like a business that's gone and an empty sign. So, okay, we appreciate that. We're looking to. Any other comments? Okay. Let's move on to uh, the bills. No, let's move on to the re common meetings previous minutes. Okay. So, I need a motion to approve the minutes from the previous meeting of August 1st, 2016. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carried. Now let's look at the bills. We all should have received those. Um, I've got three treasurer. Any additions or deletions? Four additions. Okay, can we hear about them? Sure. The first one is business card for $115.96. The second one is Excellus for $46,103.71. Um, next is the New York Power Authority for $77,479.07. And lastly is Simply Prescriptions for $3,323.98. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Make a motion to pay the bills. Do you have a second? Second. Second. Okay. Discussion? Yes. Yeah, some questions. How about it? Uh, Page uh, five of eight, well, halfway down, was paying six thousand two hundred sixty-four dollars seventy-nine cents to the New York State Department of Public, and then it doesn't go any further. Public and service. Public service. Okay. 2016-2017 assessment. What is that? That is that we pay twice a year. Okay. And I believe that is for the electric. It's, it's every year, it's twice a year. It's a revised assessment. So this is the last one for this year. Do you make it over, Brian? Um, assessment. I mean, I, I have to look into a little more. I don't know the details of it, of what exactly it is. Okay. Uh, well, I know we pay it twice every year. Okay. I'll probably see our send for more definition. Yes. Okay. The, uh, the other question I have on the bill is uh, professional services received uh, for by uh, Melissa McManus, $17,400, 2000 in professional services from 2012. I'm assuming it was probably for grant writing. Yes, it's two different ones actually. Those funds come from the grant. We pay them, we get the money back from the grant. There's nothing on the grant. I'm trying to see which, what grants they were. You know. Oh, yeah, I, I can tell you the amounts. Um, the first one is the 2012 Clinton Regional Waterfront Grant, and that one was for $17,400. And the other one is the 2011 Clinton Essex Regional Waterfront Grant. And that one's for $1,465. Thank you very much. I have your You're welcome. Thank you. Further discussion? Do you all those in favor? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Opposed? Motion carried. I want to ask our board clerk, do we have any correspondence? No correspondence. correspondence. Okay, well, let's start off. First of all, I have the pleasure of presenting uh, Mr. Brian Belke with an award from New York Conference of Mayors. Mr. Belke, come forward, please. New York State Conference of Mayors presents this 30 year certificate of public service to Brian Belke in recognition of 30 years of distinguished public service 
Dear community, New York State Conference of Mayors, I'm pleased and honored the public knowledge and dedication and commitment, and I know it's 33 years. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay, government entity certificate of resolution. All that is is approving signatures uh, for our uh, account at TD Bank, the signatures for the mayor, the deputy mayor, the treasurer, and the deputy treasurer. So I need a motion to approve those signatures for the government governmental entity certificate of resolution. Make a motion to approve the signatures. Second? <clears throat> I'll second that. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next one, uh, we have to approve this notice to bidders and authorize the clerk to publish it. You all have it. Uh, contract 2016-01, 15 kilovolt, 60 amp pad mounted switch, 4W2LB2FI, and that's a, what will go into the uh, into the paper. So I need a motion to approve and authorize the clerk to publish this. Make a motion to approve it. Second. Further discussion? This we're purchasing this or selling it? Purchase. 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 This is going in the substation? No, it's to replace the old uh, oil filled fuse type switch that's across the road here. Oh, house. thank you. Okay. It's a new interrupter type with a lot of safety features. Okay. Further questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Okay, last week we had uh, some public comment on the rest trail. Uh, we had four concerns that were brought up. Uh, the residents said they were told by a code enforcement officer that they uh, were supposed to receive a letter notifying them of the project. There was supposed to be a green space buffer between the project <clears throat> and their land, that there was supposed to be a setback from the project, and I was concerned about the lights, why, why they would be going up because of the part of Okay, first of all, the uh, code enforcement officer has a lot of codes to enforce, and in this case he made a mistake. No letter is required to be sent to you. This, uh, there was no, uh, nothing in the code for a, require a special use permit, and that's when the letter would be sent notifying you of a project. This isn't a special use, it's normal, it's a municipal sidewalk, it's a, it's a walking trail. Also, we are located at the different, Ross's Point for zoning purposes is divided up into uh, different uh, districts, and they're identified either as commercial, industrial, residential, or mixed. We're in M1 here, which means mixed commercial and residential, and you guys live in an R7, which is a residential. Between those two, there is no requirement for a green buffer space. Across the road from you, on Rose Avenue, behind those houses, there's a commercial lot. Uh, if you walk back there, you'll see where that fence is, and it's 30 feet from that lot's property line. But that's because it's between commercial and residential. In your case, it's between mixed and residential. There's no requirement for any green buffer space. Huh. Also, uh, there's no setback requirements. Setback requirements apply to buildings, front, rear, back, side. If we're going to put a building up, uh, it would have to be 10 feet from the property line on that side. It's a sidewalk. You know, sidewalks go right up to people's property line. It's, it is what it is. It's there. And lights, uh, the, the park will be open in the fall and the spring now, during Eastern Standard Time and it does get dark, darker earlier when we're done with daylight savings times. And it should provide a, some extra security uh, during the hours that that's going to be used. Um, there's going to be benches that people can sit on. So, we want them to be able to see what's going on. There's going to be some senior exercise equipment. In other words, there's not going to be there's not going to be sit-ups and pull-ups, but there's going to be different things to improve balance, improve core strength, things like that. 
and uh, we want to make sure it's well lighted for safety. And uh, so we're we're in the process of doing that. As far as as uh, it seems to serve more as a delineation of the park, uh, and hopefully, uh, if if there's issues of people coming from the park into your lot, we'd like to hear about it. If people are coming from Rose Avenue and walking into the park, of course we'd also like to hear about that too. But you know, I, I think you could you can simply put a no trespassing sign if you don't want to walk through your lawn. Um, I'm just, uh, it's, I want to apologize that you received the wrong information. Again, it was an honest mistake, and uh, it, it just happened, and we're correcting it now. So you have the right information. Now, I, I think some of the other board members had some conversations with residents there. You want to make any other comments? No, it's um, no, 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 no. Okay. So, the board uh, have any other? You feel like covered basically what what we needed to for this issue? I, I think so. I, I took a pretty good look at it, and I I don't think it would take much um, to continue this, the cedar edge across the back if you so choose um, from behind Mr. Lombard's garage over to his neighbor's fence. Or, or perhaps he could put up some sort of a fence, but it's, it's hard for the village to do it because the next thing you're going to have all the other neighbors saying they want the same thing. And, uh, I don't well, we have a park downtown. It's not fenced. Right. I mean, it's an open space. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to make this an inviting and a safe place. And we're hoping that that makes the residence areas just as safe. Uh, we don't expect it to be a gathering spot for, because the trail is here, a gathering spot for undesirables or anything like that. We, we expect that this is going to be a trail used, hopefully, by, by uh, the adults in our community, the seniors, um, and have some interesting things on it that they're going to be able to use and, and want to do. They you know they're not going to want to do pull-ups and sit-ups and those kind of things and weightlifting. But, there's some other options that are available out there that are being worked on right now. So I know the benches are in, are coming in next week. And uh, the next week, uh, it's June? It's yeah. Friday or Monday. And so, you know, that will be, we'll be looking at that and then trying to finish up the, uh, the soil along the sides. A lot, of, a lot of interest in maybe volunteers doing that. I'll have to look into that. I trust that when we put lighting in, it'll be directional, so we're not lighting up these people's backyard. It'll be directional towards a certain you know, lumens, towards the way from the park residence. On George, there's going to be a regular street light. It's going to be 14 feet hour. Yeah. It's going to be fine, it's going to be street lights. I'm going to be lighting up in the back of Okay, next. Lincoln Boulevard. Remember we had a discussion about Lincoln Boulevard and who owned it, where the, where the uh, right away was, where the power was. You all should have a copy of the map of the electric department showed us that just west of Lincoln Boulevard is is where that electric line is buried. Mm -hmm. Now, in discussions, we the village administrator called uh, the town. Uh, we're going to initially talk to town secretary. We're going to talk to Mr. Barkham, the supervisor, and he said that, as far as he knew, Champlain did not have deed to that property. And we're like, okay. Uh, we know that it came from the Champlain, or the, uh, the development authority. And according to the administrator, they called the attorney for the town. And he said, well, there may not have been a deed filed transferring it, like a quick claim transferring it to the town. He said that by rule of law, it would have had to go for the grant to the town. 
So right now we are uh, still trying to find out who owns it. Um, there was there's been individually discussions uh, in my office with a couple of you guys, and I guess we can we should have the discussion as a whole board now that we can in a meeting. Um, one of the things that was discussed was perhaps uh, the town should turn it if if the town ends up owning it, whoever ends up owning it, that they would turn that over to the owners of the complex there. That would be uh, Mr. Pod, I believe. And uh, since it was originally part of their land, and it basically is their driveway, and uh, you know, have them take it over and and do what what they would with it. What do you guys think of that? I know I've spoken. To you two individually about I, it. I don't think it's a good idea for the village to take it. I'd like to see power checks take possession of it if they can. There's nothing to develop down there. Half the lots that are there are in the wetlands. Yeah, we ver you verified that. What can it what could it possibly gain us to take possession of this road? I, I don't see where it could be. Exactly. I don't see any benefit either. Like I stated at the last meeting, there's no benefit to us, and it's just to throw the cost to us and to the taxpayers. I, I don't, I don't think that uh, the owners are averse to getting it back. I mean, it would mean they plow it, but we have uh, other industries in town that plow their own long driveways. And, uh, yeah. It's uh, that's what I was going to bring up next. Furthermore, if this drags on for another year, do we continue maintaining it, following it, sanding it? I think we have to for emergency medical service and for a fire service, yeah. I think we have to. Well, I think so, too. If it's a private road and all the buildings on there are rented, I mean, uh, wouldn't it be up to the developer? Well, it's not, we don't know who, we're still, if once if once we determine who owns it, who owns it, and then then we'll, we'll be able to, to go from there. Right now, we're or one more way. Well, we're still waiting for a, a legal opinion. We have nobody to ask the plow for us if we own who owns it. Well, I, I, I might be wrong on this, but I, I think that the town does not plow a Pillsbury Road for power, uh, for uh, uh, Champlain, plastic. Champlain plastics. They have an independent contractor do that, and it should be the same down there, I you think. Correct, but like I'm saying, it doesn't get plowed because nobody knows who owns it. Right. It's going on. Right. I don't, we can't, we can't, I, hopefully we can have this resolved before the snow flies. Um, if we don't, I, I think, we we'll to discuss it then. I think we have to, you know, yeah, I mean, hopefully we, it's done before that. But if it happens to go beyond that, I think we have to uh, make sure that that road is open for fire trucks and ambulances. That's my opinion. That's not a, that's an opinion. So, anyway, we're going to continue to try to get a, a definitive answer on this, uh, and we will bring it to the public and the board as soon as we possibly can, that is, as soon as we hear about it. Okay, we were going to have a discussion uh, on uh, EMS. However, uh, Trustee Moore, the chairman of that committee, has said uh, there's some new developments that he needs to uh, look into for the meeting the next meeting that we uh, get into that. So we'll move on to item number seven, which is a non-sufficient fund return check policy. You guys have uh, all read this. Uh, basically, it says any checks received or automatic clearinghouse transactions initiated payment for service to the village, which are returned and rejected for insufficient funds or other dues decided by the bank or financial institution shall be charged $20 per check or ACH transaction. A customer or their account can be flagged for 12 months. Uh, at its discretion, the village can schedule a disconnection of utilities. If the payments decided, if two checks or ACH transactions have been returned, uh, it may be required the village to render future payments by cash money order certified for cashier's check. That's a summary of what it says. I'm sure you've all read it in detail more. So what we need is a motion to approve the non-sufficient funds return check policy for the ability to the office. Motion to accept the policy. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Last item, 
Uh, as you guys know, we, we have a DSL at the village office. We have maxed that out with the new uh, electronic payment system, so much so that it cannot transmit the necessary amount of information. Fortunately, we're able to, uh, we have fiber optic available to us across the street, and Prime Link will bring it into, uh, bring it into our building. Uh, it's going to be at the uh, same price as DHL, DSL. DHL. Uh, it'll be a one-time $500 installation charge. However, the uh, monthly fee is more than makes up for anything on that. So, when you see fiber optic going in there, that's the reason why uh, we have to get it. We can't send out the file; it has to go every night. Uh, and the server's chugging along. Well, I don't know if chugging is the right word. Stumbling, everything is better. But uh, that's what that's where we got to go with it. So that will be taking place. Uh, Jean, do you know about when? They were in measuring today, so there was a 30 to 45 day window. Okay. For completion. You guys have anything you want to say about that? No, I'm all set. Okay. Um, all right. Trustee Moore, you have anything? I have nothing. Thank you. Trustee Mott? I have nothing. Trustee Arnold? Nothing. Trustee Dart? I have nothing. Okay. Uh, other reports? Madam Clerk? I have nothing. Madam Administrator? Nothing for me, thank you. Mr. Belke? Code enforcement officer? Nothing, sir. Okay. Uh, then we're going to open the meeting to the public for further comments. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried.